Hello and welcome to the American Planning Association's National Capital Area Chapter 2021 Annual Conference. My name is Nick Kushner. I'm an at-large board member on the NCAC uh, board of the APA, um, where you're listening to a pre-recorded session of the conference called the Transit Critical Matrix, using data to evaluate route essentialness. Um, your presenter will be Thomas Orgren from Foursquare ITP. I'm really excited to listen to this session. So uh, without further ado, oh, I do wanna mention that this is worth uh, 0 0.25 uh, CM credits that you can claim um, from the APA website at the completion of the session. Um, and without further ado, uh, I'll kick it over to Thomas to lead us through the session. Hi, my name is Thomas Orgren, and I'm a transportation planner and data scientist with Foursquare Integrated Transportation Planning. Welcome to this presentation about the transit critical matrix, which is a method of evaluating route essentialness using data that we've developed in collaboration with the Maryland Transit Administration. So before we get much further, uh, we should just give a big disclaimer about what you're about to hear in this presentation. The policies discussed uh, in here haven't yet been adopted by the Maryland Transit Administration and don't represent current official agency policy. Uh, this tool was developed to use a, to evaluate equity in the service planning process, but not intended to replace or change any aspect of the agency's currently adopted Title VI implementation plan. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Title VI is the section of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that governs equity in transit service and MTA's Title VI implementation plan is its policies uh, enacted to meet those legal obligations. Uh, so you can learn more about all of these policies and more at this website here. Um, and finally, just to note that the data shown in this presentation doesn't represent actual MTA data, the route numbers, the service types, everything have been anonymized. Um, because uh, this has not been officially released yet. We'll talk a little bit about the project background, um, then we'll go into what exactly is the transit critical matrix, how it's produced uh, with a quick high level look at that. Um, and then we'll talk about how the transit critical matrix can be used uh, within service planning decisions. So first a little bit about the project background, like pretty much every transit system in the country and around the world, MTA experienced major pandemic related uh, drops in ridership up to about two thirds of ridership fell off during the height of the pandemic in May 2020. But that's actually less than many of the other peer systems in the region or around the country that were seeing drops of ridership in excess of 90%. Um, along with that, drop in ridership comes a big drop in passenger revenues and added to the fact that state governments just didn't know what the economy was going to look like on the other end and had no idea what tax revenues were going to look like for the following fiscal year. So in response to the Maryland Transit Administration had to propose a major service configura reconfiguration uh, to local bus service which was intended to preserve service to as many areas of high transit need and essential jobs as possible while still fitting into this new constrained funding environment that we were all bracing for. And not surprising, it's pretty much impossible to make major cuts to transit service without making a lot of people unhappy. Um, these cuts were very unpopular with the community. And one of the biggest criticisms we heard was that MTA didn't consider equity enough when planning the cut. Um, when, but behind the scenes, MTA had actually done lots of analysis of equity impact of disease service changes, including a prototype version of this transit critical matrix. Uh, but that process wasn't really communicated well to the larger community. So they had every right to think that it hadn't been considered. Um, but just to give MTA credit, um, there are really, really great behind the scenes processes that that they've put together. Um, to make sure that equity is considered in pretty much every every decision. And uh, we actually take a lot of the stuff that MTA does and bring it to other um, transit services as a model because MTA is doing a lot of great stuff in this field. So just want to throw that out there, that um, the community perception doesn't necessarily always match um, what MTA is doing behind the scenes. And that's kind of the big problem. So as part of that, um, initiative to 
build better relations with better communications with the community, uh, MTA wanted to formalize this transit critical matrix process into an agency wide policy that would would be accessible to the public as a way to show how MTA does consider equity within these sorts of changes. So then what is the transit critical matrix? To answer that, first we'll look at what makes a route essential. And in this case, we're looking for routes that have a lot of people with high transit need who ride the route or live near the route, or just routes that a lot of people ride. Um, and we are calling these as quote unquote essential routes, sort of a relic of, from the COVID-19 um, planning recovery process. Uh, when we were looking for routes that served a lot of quote unquote essential jobs like medical and logistics, the things that stayed open during the pandemic. We created the transit critical matrix as a way of visualizing those factors uh, for each route compared to its system averages. So the equity value explains a little bit about whether there are a lot of people with high transit need who live near the route or ride the route. And the ridership value explains whether or not there are a lot of people who ride the route. And the transit critical matrix is a scatter plot with the equity value of each route on the X axis, the ridership value of each route on the Y axis. Um, and then the breaks between the quadrants are formed by plotting the system averages uh, for equity value and ridership value. And depending on which quadrant then a route falls into on this matrix, uh, different interventions might be useful within service planning, different funding needs, different um, sorts of roles within the system. A route's equity value is based on three main factors. One is its rider profile score, which gets at who rides the route. Uh, its residence with access score, which explains who lives near the route. And its access to destination score, which explains what jobs and activities uh, the route serves. And these are all combined together, averaged together to create one equity value for the entire route. So the rider profile score looks at the percentage of low income riders, minority riders, and riders without access to a vehicle. And this is based on data uh, from onboard passenger surveys that MTA conducts periodically every few years to find out more about who's riding the services and where they're going. And the residence with access score is based on the service areas around the route on how many low income residents, how many minority residents, and how many residents or households without access to a vehicle are within the route service area. And the access to destination score is also looking at the route service areas. It's looking for the number of low wage jobs uh, with transit dependent workers, uh, the number of service sector destinations such as government and medical services, and the number of retail, commercial, and entertainment destinations. Um, and we find that these are all uh, things that are associated, are jobs that are associated with, with higher transit ridership. Um, and we use US Census data, the longitudinal household employer dynamics data to assess this. Um, and just to note about the service areas, uh, each route's service area depends on its speed, its capacity, and spacing of stops, Kind of each type of mode pulls from a different area around its stops. So around commuter services like the Mark train and commuter bus, looking at a larger area uh, because they tend to have a little higher capacity or at least Mark train does and um, wider stop spacing. So for subway and light rail routes, we're looking at a half mile buffers around each stop as the service area. Um, and for local bus, we're looking at quarter mile buffers as a local bus stops more than any other route. Um, and each stop draws from a relatively smaller service area. Um, so those three scores are all combined into a single equity value. And then that's plugged against the ridership value. And so the ridership value represents the amount of ridership a route produces. And it could be in terms of total ridership could be a ridership per unit of service, like one hour of service on a bus. It could be uh, based on the change of ridership, which is where this actually originally started. So in the case of this transit critical matrix that we're showing today, 
um, the ridership value is measured uh, in passengers per vehicle revenue hour, which is one hour of revenue service on one rail car or bus. But the y-axis doesn't even have to be ridership. I, I think this is a really kind of fun, flexible thing about this is you can take the equity value and plot it about against just about anything. So another analysis that um, we're about to undertake for MTA is comparing on-time performance to equity value to see if there are certain high equity value routes that are performing worse than others that we should really target our uh, reliability and interventions towards. So it's a really flexible methodology, um, and that's one of the great things about it. Um, it's already evolved since MTA started using it, and we're discovering more and more uses for it um, with each plan we make. So then when you put it all together, this is what it actually looks like with some data. Again, it's not real data that you're looking at. This is not actually the local link 22. Um, Baltimore doesn't even have routes that match most of these numbers. Um, so here you can quickly, as I said, discern like, okay, these are the routes that, that are performing both high and equity and ridership value. These routes are performing low in both ridership and equity value. Now that we've got a transit critical matrix, what can we do with it? Depending on where a route falls in the matrix, it may be suitable for different interventions. The routes with both high equity values and high ridership values are the routes where something is really working right. And they're kind of the, tend to be the bread and butter of the system. So these routes are where you'll tend to get the most improvements from infrastructure, improvements like bus lanes or traffic signal priority. Um, these are the sorts of routes where you want to increase capacity to meet ridership oftentimes uh, and improve ridership. And these are the routes where that are going to be good for studying things like limited stop or enhanced bus service um, that allows people to get where they're going quicker. Uh, routes in quadrants two and three um, with mixed equity and ridership values. Uh, these, it depends on where it's falling, but you might want to increase or decrease the capacity to meet um, passenger demand. Or if there's perhaps a nearby uh, pocket of area, area of high transit need, you can rely, realign the route to serve more of those target populations and improve the equity value. Or you can just streamline and improve network design um, and network connectivity to make the existing transit more useful, connect people to more places. Um, the idea here is to kind of always try and move routes up and to the right on, on the matrix as much as possible. I mean, it's based on system averages, so you can't, the system averages will move as service improves, but the idea is you want to improve your equity value, you want to improve your ridership value whenever possible. And so the routes that have both low equity and ridership values, these imply different interventions too. Um, so this, these routes are more apt to need streamlining uh, to improve ridership value um, or make it uh, more useful to more people. Um, possibly can be realigned to improve equity value and, and serve more areas of high transit need. Or perhaps you just need to adjust the level of service or investigate a lower capacity option such as microtransit to serve the ridership that you have more efficiently um, if it's just an area where ridership is always going to be low, but you still have to provide coverage service. And so you can also use this as sort of a, at the system-wide level to compare between service types, between modes, and help understand the role of each mode within the system in the region. Uh, for example, it could be used as another tool to consider in funding decisions. If additional funding becomes available, um, helps you understand what sort of strategies are going to make the most sense for each mode. Well, that's a high level look at the transit critical matrix that we've developed in collaboration with the Maryland Transit Administration. So if you have any questions about the transit critical matrix or comments about this presentation, please feel free to get in touch with me at the email or phone number listed here.
And I definitely thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your conference. Have a good one. Bye.